We have some fun news today on the chicken front. Olive Eggers. With a lot of our snow gone, all these chickens outside of their fencing, and the sun out, it feels like it might almost be spring soon, but it's not. It's actually below freezing right now, and I really should have on a warmer jacket. This vest is not quite enough. But the other spring-like conditions that are emerging are the eggs. The chickens have really picked up production. In fact, today we got our highest egg count ever for the last year and a half plus that we've been on the homestead here. We have never gotten as many eggs as we've gotten today. 18, 18 eggs. The highest we've ever gotten prior is 17. You're probably wondering with all these chickens, why are we only getting 18 eggs? Well, I'll get into that in a minute. First, I want you to see all these chickens running around. What the chickens are doing is they're flying over the cattle panel fencing. Some people say, oh, just clip their wings, but I don't really mind that they get out. They go back in the evening, they just fly back over the fence and go back in, and we're not really concerned with them getting into a garden or anything this time of year, so it's really not a problem. Right here in this shot is the bulk of our Olivegar crew. There are a few cockerels in there, but all the smaller black ones that don't have a lot of color on them are the hens, or they are the pullets who are quickly turning into hens. Oh, here comes another one. Hello. There are a few other olive eggers that are not on camera right now. They're over still behaving properly in the chicken area. So a decent percentage of the birds that we have weren't actively laying. They were just hatched out late summer, early fall of 2017. I'm really excited though because today we got our first olive eager egg. Surprisingly, the olive agar egg actually looks kind of like an Americana egg. It's more bluish than it is green that I was expecting to see from an olive agar. Of course, the olive agars are half Americana, half copper moran, which should give us the green egg, but they just didn't. Perhaps in time, they'll give us green eggs, or our other hope with that is we have the Carolina blue sex links, who are also olive agars. So perhaps when the Carolina blue female that we have starts laying eggs, maybe those will be green. But the important thing is we're getting more eggs, which is awesome, and they've really only just begun. So I expect in the next couple of weeks, more of them will be coming into production. The real rock stars of this flock though are the Swedish flower hens and the lavender Orpingtons. These guys are cranking it out. They have lighter tan eggs, which aren't as exciting or fancy as copper moran eggs, that dark brown or the blue that you get from Americana, but they are really bringing it. We're getting a lot of eggs from them. So far, they've been a fantastic addition to our flock. The copper morans kind of eased off during the winter. They were they decided to go on vacation a little bit with the egg laying, but they have been picking production back up. The Rhode Island Reds are pretty steady. They're delivering. And the IM Chimanis are even holding their own, giving us some fairly regular egg production. It seems that we've struggled for quite some time with low egg production, so to finally be getting up there in the 18 eggs range and knowing that when the rest of those olive eggs start laying, and when the weather gets warmer and the days get longer that it's only going to go up from there It's super exciting that we're going to be running a surplus. Frittata night will be coming around much more frequently when that happens. In other news, I have three announcements for you guys. Number one, Paul Wheaton, the Duke of Permaculture himself, has invited me to come out to be a guest instructor at his 
permaculture design course that he is hosting this summer on his property in Missoula, Montana. If any of you guys have been interested in taking a PDC and you've been looking for a really good opportunity to find a good one, check this one out guys. There's a link below in the description. Not only will it be awesome because I'm gonna be one of the guest instructors, I'm gonna be teaching three different topics, one of which is gonna be on rotational grazing systems and using livestock to improve pasture. But there are several other really good instructors and the lead instructor is Alan Booker. I spoke with him on the phone recently and He's a pretty squared away guy. I think he's gonna do an excellent job with the course. Again, if you've ever been interested in taking a permaculture design course, I think this is a great opportunity. Number two, I have heard from a few different viewers that they're not getting notifications from YouTube when I publish a video. They're having to go back and check the channel manually to see if I've posted a video or not. And consequently, they have missed some videos. Well, there's nothing I can do about that on the YouTube end of things. YouTube either wants to let you know about my videos or they don't. But I'm gonna start doing something to where I can help this problem and let you guys know about videos coming out. If you head over to grassfedhomestead.com, on our website, you're gonna be able to sign up for our mailing list. If you get a pop-up for Esther Emery book giveaway, ignore that, that was about this time last year and I've not been able to get that deleted from the site. There's some, I put it somewhere in the coding and I can't find it to get it out, so ignore that. But if you sign up for our email list, I'm gonna start sending out a weekly email, I'm not sure which day, maybe like a Friday or Saturday, and let you know about any videos that had been published that week. So in case you missed any, you'll be able to just open the email and there will be some links. There you go. And this last one is in regards to the Grassfed Homestead podcast that's gonna be coming soon. I've been recording podcasts, getting it ready, getting things polished up and seeing how it goes. But the most recent one I recorded was with Jeffrey Pardo, who's right out of this community. Jeffrey is a semi-retired attorney and now a practicing farmer. Jeffrey and I sat down to continue the discussion that was started in my video about starting a farmstead scale business, whether you should be an LLC, a sole proprietor. Jeffrey, having a lot of experience as an attorney in those areas, sat down and talked with me. We talked about the ins and outs of the different options and pros and cons, farm liability, insurance. So when someone is considering starting either a side hustle on their homestead selling um, carrots or maybe they just have some chicken eggs whatever it might be or if somebody is uh, looking to start a cattle ranch and they're they're doing a larger volume um, transactions that have larger revenue uh, at play what are the different options people can look at for how to structure that business? The structure is you can, you can make a million dollars as a sole practitioner, uh, and the IRS doesn't care and you shouldn't care. You just put the million dollars in your bank and you declare it, you pay your tax on it. And it's not the amount that is the driving factor. What ends up being the driving factor is, uh, first, how complex the business, the business itself is going to be. So there's going to be accounting issues and there's going to be partner issues. There's going to be employment issues. Those are the things that tend to drive structure. Of course, I will be letting you guys know when this podcast is ready to launch. I'm hoping before February is over to have this out. But in the meantime, if there are any topics that you want me to dive in deep on, prolonged discussion, more details on, such as the business stuff, leave a comment below this video and let me know some of the topics you guys might be interested in so I can push out some more podcasts.